names are, in fact, nouns. So where would you guess the primary stress would be on a two-syllable name? You're right, it's on the first syllable, correct? Well, if it's a name of English origin, yes, the primary stress will likely be on the first syllable. And as you can see, here are a list of examples of common names. Richard, Karen, Jerry, Edwin, Thomas, Laura, Johnson, Cooper, and Watkins. You have a small mix of men's names, women's names, and last names. And yes, these names all follow that pattern. They stress the first syllable loudest and longest. But not all names follow this pattern. Names that come from languages other than English, languages like French, may stress the opposite syllable. And my name is one good example of that, Nicole. It stresses the second syllable since it's a name that came from the French language. Other names that do this are Suzanne, Monique, Michelle, and Colleen. So beware, not all names are of English origin. In the United States, we have people from all over the world. And so each language will be different in how they stress the names. So in this presentation, we'll just be talking about American names. I took a look at some of the most common names over the last hundred years in the United States and here's what I found. There are a lot of two-syllable names. So let's take a look at last names first. Now I went back to 1990 because in the last 20 years we've had a very large growth in our Hispanic population and so we have several names in the top 20 that are now from the Spanish language. But today I want to focus on names from English so we know how to pronounce the stress pattern in those. So let's take a look at these common last names. Johnson, Williams, Davis, Miller, Wilson, Taylor, Thomas, Jackson, Harris. Did you notice anything interesting in this group of names? I hope so. They all stress the first syllable. So great, there's another rule that you can use. Whenever you're meeting a new person and you're not quite sure how to pronounce their name, you might take a good guess. Now, let's take a look at some common women's names. Now again, these names were taken over the last 100 years. So you may see some names that are from an older generation or that you don't hear quite as much anymore. So beware, these are taken from the last 100 years. All right, Mary, Linda, Susan, Sarah, Karen, Nancy, Betty, Lisa, Sandra, and Ashley. And again, where did you hear the stress on these names? On the first syllable, yes, correct, All right. And Something interesting to note, only two of these women's names have common nicknames. Susan often shortens to Susie and Sandra to Sandy. Right. Let's take a look at some common two-syllable men's names. Robert, Michael, William, David, Richard, Joseph, Thomas, Charles, Daniel, and Matthew. And where did you hear the primary stress on each of these? On the first syllable, correct? Now let's talk a little bit about nicknames. Nicknames are often a shortened form of your given name, the name that you were given at birth. It's the name that everybody calls you. And especially men have nicknames in the United States. Many women do as well. But if you have a name that is three syllables long or longer, you will almost certainly have a nickname because English has a preference for shorter names. So all of our names are generally one or two syllables long. So beware, names like Robert will often shorten, Joseph will often shorten. So you probably don't need to use the longer name. Okay, many of these nicknames actually end with an E sound. 
and they may be spelled with a Y, with an IE, or an I. And I'm going to give you some examples on the next page here. Common men's nicknames. For Robert, you don't hear people called Robert very often, although you see the name written. They're very often referred to as Rob, Robbie, Bob, or Bobby. Michael, you often do hear the name Michael, but you just as frequently hear Mike. William usually shortens to Will, Willie, Bill, or Billy. David sometimes shortens to Dave. Richard to Rich, Rick, Ricky, Dick, and then there are even others. Joseph shortens to Joe or Joey. Thomas to Tom or Tommy. Charles to Charlie or Chuck. And Daniel to Dan or Danny. And Matthew shortens to Matt. Let's take a look at some longer names. We'll start out with women's names here. And the ones that you see a star next to are the ones that have common nicknames. First one is Jennifer, Elizabeth, Patricia, Jessica, Kimberly, Emily, Amanda, Melissa, Stephanie, Rebecca, and Cynthia. Can you take a guess what the nicknames might be? A lot of them will end in an E sound. For example, Jenny, Lizzie, Cindy, Becky, all end in that characteristic E sound. Let's look at the stress in each of those. Unfortunately, the three syllable nouns and names aren't as simple as the two syllable ones. They may be stressed in different places. So let's take a look at each of these common names so you know where the stress is in them. So each of the words, the red is the primary stress syllable. So the first one, Jennifer, Elizabeth, Patricia, Jessica, Kimberly, Emily, Amanda, Melissa, Stephanie, Rebecca, Cynthia. Let's take a look at some men's names, some longer ones. Christopher, Timothy, Nicholas, Jonathan, Benjamin, Alexander, Zachary, and Jeremy. Now all of these names, with the exception of Jeremy, have common nicknames, and I'm sure you can probably guess what they are. Most of them are the primary stress syllable, the red, Chris, Tim, Nick. All but one of these names has the primary stress on the first syllable for the men's names, which makes it a lot easier than the women's. So you'll notice how all of the common two-syllable names men's, women's, and last names all stress the first syllable. So this really goes a long way in helping you know how to pronounce a lot of the names in English. Unfortunately, this is not the case for longer names, but often you don't need to worry about it because most people with longer names have nicknames. So you'll be able to use the nickname and hopefully it will follow the familiar two-syllable pattern.